Prusa PEI powder coated spring steel sheets are finally starting to appear, except you can't get one. So let's test an alternative. After a long, long wait, Prusa Mark III PEI powder coated spring steel sheets are finally being seen in the wild. Originally a real selling point for the printer, Prusa experienced quality control issues that they have taken a long time to get on top of. When ordering your Mark III, you had two options. You could have it sent as soon as it was available with a sticker coated spring steel sheet, which is what I did, or you could choose to wait for the original powder coated sheet and those printers have finally started to ship now. From all reports, people are really happy with them, but that doesn't mean you or I can get them. So let's look at an alternative. This is a third party PEI powder coated sheet that I got from The King on eBay all the way from Canada. It certainly wasn't cheap as it cost me $50 US for the product and another $30 US shipping. In Australian money, that's $107. So I'm definitely taking one for the team. For this video, I'm gonna compare everything to the original Prusa product, even though it's not available yet. Now it is listed on their store for $25 US and to Australia, it's the same $30 shipping. If I could hypothetically order it, it would only cost me $75 Australian, which actually is still not really that cheap. Now I do understand that living in Australia is a huge disadvantage when it comes to shipping. So I have found this on Amazon and I have an affiliate link below so you can pick it up with much better postage if you're in North America. Let's move on with the comparisons. We have the one that shipped with my printer and we've got the new one. And the first thing we're gonna look at is size. The mounting notches on this new one line up perfectly, but overall the size is very slightly different. When you overlay the two on top of each other, you can see that the King version is very slightly narrower, maybe one or two millimeters overall. I don't really think this is an issue, however, as it fits the printer perfectly. Now, if you compare the thickness, you can see that the new sheet is definitely thinner. I verified this with some calipers and I went around several points on the Prusa item and it was about 1.1 millimeters. This new one is about 0.7 millimeters, so it is 0.4 millimeters thinner. The variance in thickness as I measured the different sides was pretty much on par with the Prusa version. The instruction sheet that came with it told me that I needed to update my Live Z to get it printing accurately. And this is something I verified by printing a 0.2 millimeter thick rectangle. Here we can see that I have my Live Z dialed in pretty perfectly in my opinion for the original sheet. I peel it off and it's got nice even thickness. All of the layer lines are overlapping and there's a good amount of strength. Without any adjustment, I do the same thing on the new sheet and you can see it's under extruded because it's not squished enough into the bed. The result when I peel it off is the individual extrusion separating. So you would definitely need to update your Live Z to get a good result on this new sheet. Now that's not too hard to do, but just keep in mind, it's slightly annoying if you wanted to change back and forth between the two different sheets. Now, because this new one is thinner, it's definitely more flexible. This original one is pretty flexible, definitely more so than an aftermarket build tech one, but this one is even more flexible still. It feels nice and rugged, but the flex feels really good in your hand as well. It's a really good compromise. Time for a torture test. And I had previously been experimenting with printing this easy arm to run off Arduino for a workshop I was teaching. For this workshop, I needed many more of these. So I set up three printers printing a full plate with all of the parts at the same time to make comparisons. The first was an Ender 3 with the standard fake Biltac sheet. The first print failed from a layer shift. The second one got to the end without anything falling off. The next was the Prusa Mark III with the original sticker coated sheet and everything worked on that apart from one part. One of the tall narrow parts came loose and caused a bit of spaghetti on the surface. The last was on my Cocoon Create Touch, which has a BuildTech flex plate, which means this one sticks perfectly on top and it was a complete success. It was the only printer to complete it first go without any of the parts falling off. And that's not down to the printer, I put it down to this sheet. Just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, I attempted a second one in X3D sparkling blue filament. Now the tallest part did fail from stripped filament in the extruder drive, but that's because I had the temperature too low trying to get rid of the stringy for that Optilact. As far as the bed was concerned, it stuck perfectly again. On to removal. I'm happy to say that this new sheet releases just as easily, if not even better than the one that shipped with my Mark III. You give it a flex and the parts pop off. And I've noticed on some smaller prints that as it naturally cools, the parts tend to pop off by themselves anyway, yet they're held on really tightly when it's still hot. That's pretty much ideal as far as beds go for 3D printing. Now let's discuss texture. Now it does have a textured surface, probably like a fairly smooth sandpaper. And this means that you won't have the shiny surface like on the sticker sheet. 
The bottom of your parts won't necessarily have a texture, but rather a matte finish, which has the effect of hiding the layer lines just a little bit. If you look at the printed parts that come on the Mark III, they have a lot more aggressive texture. So I think that's what we can expect when the powder coated sheets finally come available in the shop from Prusa. One other thing that I was testing was toughness, and I did manage to scrape and use a razor blade on this without damaging it at all. Of course, it's impossible to tell how it will go long term until a lot more time has passed, but so far it really seemed durable and up to the job. My impressions overall, this used to be my favourite print bed, but this now is my new favourite. It sticks well, it removes well, there's no graphics on it, which some people might not like, doesn't bother me either way. It's just a shame it's so expensive, but at the moment it's the only option if you want to get one of these in any type of timely manner. You'd think that it will get cheaper over time, because I can't possibly sell it for twice of the price of the Prusa one once the Prusa one is released. Assuming it ends up a little bit cheaper, I think it's definitely a worthwhile purchase, and if you just can't wait to get your hands on one of these, I'd wholly recommend it to you if you're willing to pay the extra price. That's it for this video, but I'd love to hear in the comments. Do you think it's worth paying the extra money to get one of these sooner? Or are you happy with the current one? Or are you willing to wait for the Prusa one to finally be released? Hopefully this video has been informative. Thank you for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.